what's going on everyone so for today we're going to be doing a video on this camera this is the canon m50 i am going to be showing you guys how to use it as a webcam in obs studio the, this should work similar in streamlab obs uh, so we're going to do two methods i'm going to show you two methods on how i personally do it and i will leave timestamps on each method so maybe you're just looking for a specific method and that probably can help you or you can watch the whole video uh, whatever you desire uh, so let's go over a few things that you need. Um, obviously, or things I use also, but not 100% of things you need. But you do need a camera for sure. This should work. This whole setup should work similar with other Canon cameras, uh, especially more recent cameras that have been released. Uh, so this is Canon M50. Need this. When I bought that camera, I bought the kit lens with it. Uh, the 15 to 45. I'm not going to be using this. I have the EOS M to EF adapter. So this is what we're going to be using, especially if you have Canon EF lenses. I suggest getting picked this up if you have this camera because the Canon EOS M mount doesn't have very many lens selections. Uh, so the lens I will be using is the 18 to 35 Sigma lens. Um, this I highly recommend, which will be this piece right here which is a AC adapter to give you continuous power power to your camera because we know that these Canon LPE 12 batteries are not great they don't last long especially when it comes to video and stuff these tend to die pretty quick and unless you have a bunch of them then and you don't mind swapping out every time they die that that could be an option or if you do something really short period like maybe 10 minutes, 15 minutes or so, uh, then that should be okay. But if you do, if you plan on doing extended long sessions, I definitely would recommend this. And what it comes with is the power brick, obviously the AC power brick that connects to the wall. Then it has this portion, which connects to a dummy battery. Now, what a dummy battery is, is it looks like a normal battery. And the only difference is it has this little hole right here. That's where that, uh, connector connects into to give it power so you plug it in close it normal close it and then you see this rubber grommet you lift this up turn it and then that's where you'll plug it in that's cable and you get continuous power so i will leave this uh this link to this in the description down below also a link to the adapter down below and the Sigma lens, if you plan on picking up a Sigma lens, uh, a lot of people know what this lens is capable of. A lot of YouTubers use it. Okay. So we're going to set up everything. Also, oh, real quick. Another thing you need is for method one, you are going to need a micro USB. For method two, you're going to need a micro HDMI. So we're going to be using... For method one, we're going to be using EOS utilities. And for method two, we're going to be using a capture device. So this doesn't have clean HDMI out, which kind of sucks. But method one kind of gets past that. Um, but like you'll see, and I'll mention as we get there, is these both have pros and cons on the whole method, I guess you could say, the whole use of it. All right, so let's get into it. All right, so let's go ahead and do method one. So method one, this is where we're going to use the Canon EOS utility software. And the camera is connected through micro USB and my camera's on, power's connected. So let's go ahead and open up EOS utilities. You also could download this from the Canon website for free. I will leave a link in the description to where you could download it. And once you open it, you're greeted with this. We see EOS M50, so it reads the camera perfect. Then we're going to go to remote shooting. And here is like your setting dial. So as you can see, it has this little plug because it's plugged into the wall through the AC adapter, as I shown earlier in the video. Uh, you can change the shutter speed, your aperture, ISO, white balance. You can change these settings as you please. So I'm gonna click on live view shoot. If this doesn't work, then you could try movie shoot or vice versa. Okay, so now you can see my ugly mug glow. So now you can see I have uh, face tracking and eye detection, autofocus. So right now we're going to open up. Let me move these out the way. Let me open up OBS. So 
So we're gonna open up OBS. Okay, let me move this up. All right. So in order to get this picture feed into OBS, we need to go to OBS down here, click on the plus to add something, and then we're gonna do window capture. And then we're gonna create a new one. We're gonna call it Canon M50. And then here where it says window, you're gonna click the drop down, and then we're going to go to remote live view. And the remote live view brings up me, as you can see. So we're gonna hit okay. So now, let me move this down so I can show you. Now you see my picture in OBS through the software. Um, so let's crop it down to just the picture. But in order to do that, you're gonna click Alt and grab this corner and then drag it to the corner, like so. And then you can also shrink it and all that. But before we do that, you see how I have the autofocus box still. So let's go back to the remote live view window where my mouse curs cursor is. You see this little box right here that looks like a, a plus? If you click on it, it's going to disable it, but you still have autofocus. So it's kind of like a clean HDMI. Um, so let me just show you, let me just put this, this box right here. If I put it closer, it's gonna autofocus onto it. See, it's still autofocusing with no box. So it's like, a, like I mentioned, it's like a clean HDMI because all your settings and stuff are right here. And you also could change this on the fly. So my aperture right now is at 1.8. We could go to 2.8 and it's gonna change. Obviously it got darker because of the light and then we're closing the aperture. Now let's go full open again. And you could change the ISO. You could change it to auto like so, but let's put mine at 500. Oh, that's a little too much. Let's do four. Damn, it's three racing out there or what? Um, so, and then you could drag it. So with the window, you could drag it to how you like it. And you can move it to whatever corner you like. You get to adjust it to your liking. Um, you also could change, you could transform it, move it vertical, horizontal, like mirror it if you need to vertical however you need to you you can do it let's reset it well since i reset it it popped back up but all right so let's talk about a con with this like something that's can cause an issue depending on your your pc setup so i'm gonna open up the task manager one thing that sucks about this is look how much percentage of resources is using so it's it's resource hungry. So if you don't have uh, a decent setup, especially when you're going to live stream, this can cause some issues. Um, but you do get clean HDMI with well, kind of clean HDMI and it's, it's a clean picture. Um, but this is, this is the downside to it. So now let's go to method two. Okay, so this is method two. In method two, we have the micro HDMI that's connected to the camera and it's also connected to the input port of the my capture device, which is the Aver Media Gamer Live HD2. You also could use, uh, which is a very popular one, is the Elgato Cam Link. So the main reason I got this uh, capture device over that is because it was cheaper at the time during Black Friday. Uh, that's besides the point. So let's get into this. Let's go ahead and add it. So we're going to click on the plus and we're going to add a video capture device and we're going to name it Canon M50. Hit OK. And this is going to pop up. The aspect ratio is pretty messed up. So where it says resolution and uh, frames per second type, I'm going to click on it and go to custom. And then on the drop down, uh, you could do 1080 or 720. I'm going to do 1080 just for this video so you can see how clean the picture is. So now you can see, here's the picture. Let me bring it down. So you can see the black bars on the side, but like the other method, let's go ahead and crop it in. So we're gonna grab the corner and then bring it in. Hold Alt and grab the corner, hold Alt, grab the corner and bring it in. And you know you're moving it when it's green. So the green uh, bar means it's been edited. All right, so same deal. You can move it in any direction you would like move it around 
So pictures clean, as you can see, pictures really clean. Uh, also, so one thing about this, you can see the autofocus box as well, face tracking and eye tracking. The only issue with this method is the only way to get rid of the box is by putting it in manual focus. Because since this camera doesn't have clean HDMI, there's no other way to get rid of the box. So the only thing you get rid of is all the settings on the screen. So all your shutter speeds and all that. But the autofocus, you can't get rid of. So in this case, you do, whoops, you do uh, manual focus, then the box goes away. So you just have to adjust your focus. Another thing is after 30 minutes or so, the camera will put itself to sleep. It'll shut off or it'll go in sleep mode. And in order to bring it back up, I just touch the shutter uh, button and then sorry for the motorcycle outside um, to bring to wake it back up. I just touch the sh uh, shutter button like half press it like you're focusing and then it'll just pop up right away. Um, so that's the pros and cons of this method, but it's, as you can see, it looks really cool. Um, all right, now let's do a conclusion and talk about this. All right. One more thing I wanted to go over is say you have a green screen and you want to chroma key yourself out. Um, so this method works or this chroma key setup works on both methods. So if you use the EOS utilities or the capture card setup with the HDMI, the chroma key works the same, the same way. So in order to do that is you go to your source where your camera source is, as you can see, where my mouse cursor is right. Click on it, go to filters. You're going to go to filters. And then down here on this bottom section where it says effect filters, you click on the plus, we're going to add a chroma key. Hit okay. And close. Now everything is chroma keyed out. Even my head because it's green, but for example, let's go to my gameplay section, which I removed the camera. So we're going to add it back. So we're going to add existing. There we go. See, now you can see I am chroma keyed out. I need to edit it. So like, so, so I'm chroma keyed out. The only thing is, uh, you can see that, but yeah, see, that's how it looks and how simple it is just to add the chroma key effect. The only issue is you have to have good lighting because if you don't have good lighting, you're going to have issues on the chroma key, um, because it doesn't work that well with low light and the lights I'm using, I'm not using very nothing special. I have one of those lamps that looks like a scissor arm with a Phillips hue light into it. And then here I have one of those uh, newer like studio camera lights. So that's about it. And uh, now let's go to the conclusion. All right, conclusion time. Let's recap on a few things that is the con for method one. Uh, method one, like I showed you guys, can use a lot of resources. So if you don't have a beefy PC and you're streaming at the same time with a single PC, there's chances you can come into some issues with your streaming quality or games running properly or anything like that, because the software, the EOS utility that captures your video can be taking the resources away from your stream. Um, you can give it a shot. If this is the only method you have, um, the huge pro with this is you don't need a capture card. You only need the software and the micro USB and you're good to go from there. And as you saw, setting it up is pretty easy. Another con that I've come across is if you open up OBS before you open up the Canon EOS utility and have it all set up, uh, there's a chance you're going to have to reset it up in OBS because if you open up OBS first, it's going to pop up just a little square for where the capture is for this remote live view window. It cause it doesn't know where it's at since the EOS utility is not open. Um, now let's go to cons of method two. Method two is one of the ones is you have to have a capture device. If you don't have a capture device, you, you can't do method two. Um, so you would need a capture card or the Elgato cam link. So that's because those are pretty pricey. Um, also another thing is no clean HDMI. 
so you would have to use auto or manual focus you can't use auto focus because you will have the face tracking um, box around your face the whole time if you keep it on man uh, auto focus what's another thing um that's those are the two main things two main cons for the captured card device route method um as you saw both ways will work fine with chroma key the same method of chroma key setup works for both so you just need to click on properties and then do add a filter the chroma key filter and then there you go the only issue is if you don't have enough lighting then you might have issues setting up the chroma key to look pretty good but thank you for watching my video on this canon m50 um it's been a while since i did a, a video and um if you have any questions leave it down below and i will try to answer it uh, if you have any issues i'll try to help but there's no guarantees if i can resolve it or figure it out um, thank you for watching i'm out it's been a while since i made a good video and i don't know if this is a good video let me, you guys let me know you guys are all right we'll vote that okay thank you for watching Bye.